Gig Gab, episode 330 for Tuesday, December 28th, 2021. <music> Greetings, folks, and Welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians here for the last time in 2021 in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in Napomo, California, it's Paul Kent. <sighs> How you doing, Mr. Kent? Good. Did you have a nice holiday? I did. Yeah. It was nice to get the family together and uh, we, yeah, it was low key, uh, but which is normally how our Christmases go anyway. But, uh, but yeah, it was, it was nice. We, you know. Uh, got everybody together and hung out and our daughter's not home yet. She's coming home in uh, a week and a half from Italy. And so we'll schedule, we, we'll, we'll celebrate Christmas again as the four of us when she's home. But uh, Very nice. so yeah, it stretches out a little bit and it's, you know, it's all good. Yeah. Fun. How about you? Yep. It was also kind of quiet and mellow. We actually drove up to the Bay area for a, a friend's party on the 26th and got to see our mother, my mother-in-law, Terry's nice. mom. Nice. And uh, went to a party at a nice hotel in San Francisco. So that was very festive. Saw our daughters up there. So, yep, yeah, you know, time just kind of clicks on. And now we're in, uh, I'm looking forward. This week, we're doing a band holiday dinner on Thursday night. We're all going out. Nice. And then Friday, we have a New Year's Eve gig. Uh, uh, it, it will happen. I was going to say God willing, but, you know, it will happen. It's an outdoor gig. Okay. Um, okay. It's been raining. It's been raining like crazy here, but it everything is everything is shows the afternoon before until the night next day are going to be clear. So I feel pretty good weather wise. It'll happen. It's going to be cold. Um, we played this gig two years ago. Yep. I remember it's you told. Yeah, I remember you talking about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. It's fun. I mean, it's free, open to the public. It's in this uh, nice park in downtown San Jose. Uh, where they do this installation called Christmas in the Park, where it's a whole bunch of hol holiday, you know, uh, exhibits and things like that. So it's fun. Um, it's free. Um, and then this year it's outdoors. So I see a lot of things canceling everywhere. Not yeah. everything. You know, I have a friend's band that's that's pushing ahead with an indoor gig. We, we've we turned down, you know, even the couple of club gigs that we had, you know, from October on, we've turned down. We have one plan for late March. It would be the first one. But um, uh, this one we're figuring we can do. And it's kind of funny. I just sent the guys a note saying, well, I shared information about the gig, sent it to our mail list and said, hey, yep, it's outdoors. You know, bundle up, come out. Yeah. I, I did say, you know, please wear a mask. You know, we want to keep everybody safe. And then I sent a note to the band saying, you know, guys, there's a lot of stuff being canceled. Um, you know, let's just agree on, you know, backstage and set up masking policies for the band. Cause I did this before and not yeah. everybody, everybody, everybody agreed, but not everybody did it is, you know, so everybody was philosophically there, but, but they didn't actually do it. And I will say I've, I've walked away from deciding what my band's ethical role and all this type of stuff. Of. Sure. We are, we're following County health guidelines. That's it. Yep. Yep. We're, at, we're outdoors. Well, and you, and you know. everybody needs to be comfortable with, everybody in the band needs to be comfortable with what everybody in the band is doing. And, and right. what, whatever that is for you is all that matters for you, right? You, you know, like what, what one of my bands might do might be different from what your bands decide to do. And it's all okay. But just, you know, lots of transparency, I think, is the key to, to you know, fit to navigating that. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Cool. So we're looking forward to looking forward to seeing the guys. It's been several weeks. And so, you know, we did this band confab a couple of years ago. We had a really good time. Just it's a good feeling. And I think it's a good way to end kind of a crazy year with the guys yeah. and go to play one more gig and and then get to work on next year. We are already, you know, figuring out what next year is gonna be. I I you know, we're kind of in that place where half I've told you this, you know, half the band is full time working musicians. Yeah. Music is is their livelihood. I feel accountable to try and, you know, be a part of that solution, not, you know, and, and make as much money for the band as I can. I It's interesting, though, I think about opportunities that come and go that um, other bands will take that don't have that problem, right? So, you know, will my guys come down to where I live mm. um, for a weekend 
for a hundred dollars a night instead of the two or three hundred dollars a night they typically get. Uh, I don't know. I, do, I think some of them will have a problem with it. Yeah, I would um, imagine. Yeah, but other, yeah. But other bands would take that gig. You know, like cool. You don't know, go down, play some music somewhere else. You know, you know the 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 truly the truly weekend warrior guys who you know it's not strictly a money thing. And sure. Again, we'll set aside. We'll set aside the you know music has value thing. Right. And I'm just trying to say, like, like, what is scale and what are the opportunities at bands where you don't have to maximize every gig? You know, sometimes you just take a gig for fun. Yeah. And and, uh, uh, you know, th- this year, next year, we've got it already. You know, I think I got about 25 or 30 gigs booked already, which is good. And, you know, most of them are, are good pay. We'll do our I know we'll do our Halloween ticketed one again because that ended up really great. But I'd like to see if I can squeeze one or two more things. And some things I'm thinking about. Uh, we once upon a time did a holiday show, like rock and soul Christmas songs. Uh, you know, some of it at the time was like the Brian Setzer Orchestra Christmas show stuff. So, you know, that 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 big swing scare <laughs> is, is gone now. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, you know, that type of thing, you know, and we sold two, three hundred tickets back when the band was just starting out. And it was a good idea. So that might be one. I also have this, the guys in my band listening, <laughs> I'm going to hear this for the first time here, but uh, I have this thought, and I don't know if it's, I'm still basking in that amazing documentary you watch, but it would be fun to do the House Rockers play the Beatles and, mm. and do that as a ticketed show. We have probably six to eight Beatles songs in our list now. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's the type of thing where we we pick the songs Guys would have to woodshed them, and we'd probably do a week of rehearsals of it, and then go out and play the show. Right? That's fun. Yeah, that could be fun. Sure. I mean, I it, it, and I realize you wouldn't be doing this as like a, a Beatles tribute act. You'd be doing it as the no. House Rockers play the Beatles, which is you know a, a tribute, but not in the classic sense of you know a tribute band kind of thing. I, yeah, I, I mean, I think those kinds of things, depending on the market that you are in there can be place for that, right? Like, you know, I mean, similar to what I've been doing with, or what I did with my friend Stu, or what my friend Stu has been doing, where he's playing, you know, an album a month or that kind of thing. You know, doing, making it clear that people understand what they're getting and then going out and doing it. Like, that's, it. but that will bring more people in, that will bring Beatles fans in, not just House Rockers fans in. Right. And, And that, that it could be, I mean, A, it could be a successful night in and of itself, but B, it could be a thing that, you know, it, it helps to expand your reach even further. Uh, that's not a bad thing. Yeah, I like yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, you know, good examples. So we have a little bit of that rare air in the Bay Area um, where I think we could apply our arrangement to things, you yep. know, sometimes put horns where there weren't horns before. Um, and I think people would really enjoy it. We're not going to I guess the weirdest thing we would do would be like, we do Earth, Wind, and Fire has got to get you into my life instead of the Beatles got to get you into yeah, my life. you guys life, do a great right? version of that, though. That's great. Yeah. But like, that's, but that's, that, that, that's, that's as far as the type of thing I would go. It's like, you know, I don't want to I don't want to do polka versions of these songs. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. Do a polka version. But, you know, and they're songs that are so recognizable. But, you know, the Disciples of Soul did a Magical Mystery Tour. We have a great chart for Sgt. Pepper. Um, you know, I think it could be a really fun show. And again, we have enough of a fan base that I know we would sell some tickets. Right. The songs are so good that I think it would be really fun for everybody. And you're right. You communicate it clearly. It's not a tribute. We're not going to you know, dress in Beetle boots and, you know, cut our hair type of thing. Um, but hopefully Beatles fans who are probably by now, if you're a Beatles fan, you're used to hearing other treatments of Beatles songs, some of which you like and some of which you don't. Some of which I, are I, sacrilege. Let's be and then, perfectly yeah, honest. And if, yeah. you, if you want, if you want the Beatles, you go listen to the Beatles, Right. Right. Right, right, you want, yeah, exactly. You want pure Beatles, you go listen to you. You go listen to your records. And if you want to see, you know, something approaching what you could have seen the Beatles live as, if you could have seen the Beatles live, which most of us could not for a variety of reasons, uh, you know, there are Beatle tribute bands many, out there, many, right? That yeah. that that go and do that. You know, kind of they they sprung from that whole Beatlemania thing, and and a lot of them, in fact, have ties back to that even still. Uh, with members from, you know, the Broadway cast or whatever, but, uh, right. right. You know, but, but like that defined a, 
a a tribute, a Beatles tribute act. Like, okay, you're going to get the costumes and there's going to be a change and, you know, you're going to get the early stuff and the later stuff and they come out in the suits to begin and then the second act is, you know, Sergeant Pepper, you know, the whole, th- there's like, there's a, there's a, a loose script that you can follow to, to carve out a night that is very entertaining for, for Beatles fans. And, uh, and those shows can be great. I've gone to some of them and, I've been blown away by by the way some of these bands really deliver on this. You know, it's just yep. so. Yeah, no, I think that's good. That's great, man. That, yeah, that I, might be it. What do you got coming up? I had a. Um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna save New Year's for later because I want to talk about the positive stuff here. But um, I, I had a a last minute gig mid December here with Amanda. She and. Uh, a mutual friend, Meryl, did an album of Christmas songs. I think I talked about recording "Run Rudolph Run" for it during our last episode, and then and then shortly thereafter, we we played a. Uh, she did two nights. I was only available for one, so I played one night with her. But it was an Amanda gig, and so it was a pickup gig. There was no rehearsal, and in fact, up until about f- the band was not solidified until about forty eight hours before the gig. Um, I, I I think both the bass player and the guitar player uh, had come into it this particular gig last minute. The the guitar player, this guy Dave Barry, I don't think he'd ever met Amanda before we all showed up to play the gig. I'd certainly never met him. The bass player had certainly ne- never met him. And I had never met the bass player, this guy Paul Gibbons, who, uh, who had played some gigs with Amanda. We'd just never been on the same gigs. She has this ability, though, to find super talented cats to play these gigs like we got together and it was, you know, the, the three of us, Paul, Dave and I pow out about, OK, how are we going to get through these songs? Like we, we all had like different things that we knew and and we, you know, at least Paul and I had played with Amanda before. So we sort of knew what to expect there and how that was going to work. And we, you know, we talked through the tunes and and uh, and had some charts and and the gig went. I mean, given what what we started with, the gig went amazingly well. Even if you didn't know what we started with, I, I would say the gig, everybody was entertained. And that was the, you know, kind of the key. We were playing different, different takes on different Christmas songs. And it was a blast. Uh, re- you know, I, I enjoy that in the moment. Everybody's got to have big ears, listen and figure out how to lock in together, even though we just met, you know, 20 minutes ago or whatever. Uh, I, I, I get off on that sometimes. And It is fun. You know, I started that with the, my coffee house gigs. It's yeah. like I just. Sent the guys the list and said, you know, come ready. I'm not, I'm not terribly picky about what you do, but just follow me, you know, and, you know, understand what's a verse and what's a chorus and, right. you know, where we're going on things. I'll let you know if anything's going to be drastically different. Guys who I knew could play. And, and then, you know, you saw what Simon does. I mean, he's basically yeah. making a good career out of it. And, and he just like, don't get hung up on the specifics. Just, you know, show I will be play. entertaining. Yes, yeah, show up and play. And again, a lot of this stuff is in, it's kind of in most musicians of of a similar age group's dna a lot of the stuff if you're if that's what you're choosing from I mean, well that, that, that really if you're me. choosing those gb songs the general business tunes yeah the, the, this christmas gig with amanda the, these songs were not gb songs i mean they were christmas tunes but she had these different arrangements and so there were there, there was a there was a an ongoing conversation about how these songs were all going to go and it it all it came together but it was it was not like oh we'll just go play you may be right okay everybody knows how to do it right you know here's american girl how do we end it okay everybody knows how to how to get there great it wasn't that but it was it fun involved. yeah it was it was involved but it but everybody on stage could have done that and that was the thing that allowed us to have that sort of common language even though we had never met before to get through it and everybody knew how to look and like, okay, you know, we all decided, okay, when the drummer ends the song, it's over because th- uh-huh. that's that, you know, and if the drummer hasn't ended the song, it's not over. Okay, great. So, yep. Everybody, big ears, big eyes, and we'll make it through. And it was fun. You know, it was good, good little crowd and people were into it and it was, it was nice to play, which was good. You know, in a way was, you're actually, you are, you are making music there as opposed to reciting music. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We're making it up. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it was fun. You know, it it I I liked it. It was um like I said it was nice to play and and I met two more fantastic musicians. Um Paul and Dave were amazing and I I have no doubt that I will wind up playing music with one or both of them uh going forward in in nice. various capacities. Yeah. It was great. Speaking of people that and and staying in the good news department for a little bit here. Uh 
speaking of people we it, that we play music with, Fling has um, has brought in a new member. We oh, that's good. Yeah, my friend Jamie Bradley uh, is joining Fling on bass. He is he's a bass player I've played with in a variety of places. He did the original uh, Bitter Pill. Uh, shows with us. He worked at and and played with me in at Seacoast Rep and Madhouse for a while. We've done a bunch of actually we've done a bunch of Amanda gigs together. And uh, he's a, a great bass player, great singer, great songwriter. And he's got songs that fit in the Fling catalog. And like it, it's he and Russ, our our guitar player, really hit it off. I don't think they ever really knew each other. They knew of each other, but. Um, but Jamie, you know, when when we sort of put the call out, um, Jamie had reached out to me. He's like, are you really looking for a bass player? I was like, yeah. And so we brought him over and then like he and Russ have just like hit it off and they've been writing songs together and and working on stuff. And it's like, perfect. This is great. Easy, easy. And um, we've had a couple of rehearsals together and it's been it's been great. So so it's it's nice to have that energy moving forward. He's totally into the original thing, which is which is also great. Uh, very much the same page, uh, you know, w- with his own, with his own twist, of course, but, you know, we're all kind of um, in that, in that same, in that same place together, which is great. I- I'm, I'm stoked I'm about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a New Year's gig to play. Um, I, I didn't think I was going to have one. And then the Nazis came. And I don't I'm not using the term Nazis to be derogatory necessarily towards the people I'm talking about. I am simply using the term that these people use to describe themselves. And they've been awful in, in my opinion, in uh, in Portsmouth, New Hampshire here. They showed up for a children's performance uh, on a Saturday morning in front of the, the Seacoast Rep Theater that was this performance of this thing that my friend Jason does called honey punch and pals where he dresses up in drag and they do these, uh, you know, like songs for children. And it's like a whole thing. They showed up outside with signs that said drag Queens are pedophiles, uh, lining the streets in front of the theater. Now, thankfully they did not get the memo that this particular performance was canceled for completely different reasons. So the kids didn't need to be, didn't weren't, weren't subjected to this. And that's a wonderful little bit of uh, happenstance, but it's awful that we've got these people doing this. And then there was a whole outpouring of love and signs and stuff that were put at the theater. And then these Nazis came back and um, took them and burned them. And uh, it's just, it's terrible. Uh, But there was an idea floated and I loved the idea that on new year's as a bit of a reaction to the Nazis that we would do a one night only performance of Hedwig in the angry inch, which is the story of a drag queen who gets a sex change operation to escape Nazi Germany. And uh, I've talked about this show before uh, that we've done it many times. And this seemed like the perfect time to do it. Play a little rock and roll, stick our middle fingers up at the Nazis. It was going to be great. And then because of all the COVID stuff that's going on, the decision was made this past weekend to not try to make this happen. And I I totally think it was the right call not to do this particular gig, but it sucks to not be able to be a part of this response to the awful stuff that's going on. So I'm bummed about that gig being canceled. I, I've seen yeah. lots of cancellations happen. I've had my own cancellations, but this one, uh, it was like made it real. It was like, oh, crap, here we are again. Like I, you know, I hate that we're in this scenario where we just can't play and get together. Yeah, it, you know, it brings it sucks. It brings up kind of an interesting question about uh, we live in a and, and I'm going to try and walk the line on this as, sure. as carefully as I can. We live in the United States in a very divided country. Yeah, uh, sure. And not only divided in terms of values and, and ethics, but in, in what we feel is decent to other human beings to say and do right next to each other. Not, so not only are we divided about things, but what we feel is reasonable and the right way to mm. do things. Are, are, like, are, are, yes. The, yes. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. 
and, and, and approaching violence. God forbid that, it, you know, we cross that line sometimes soon, sure. right? So the really interesting question is, you know, it used to be you play music, and I would, I would say in general, the last year, the last several years, you'd see little skirmishes of things. You'd see, you know, a red hat and people react to a red hat to be as generically politically correct as possible. Sure, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, you yeah. know, that type of thing. But really, what do you do if people show up at a gig in the name of their values um, and, uh, and they mess stuff up? Do you stop playing and, you know, let the event organizer and say, I, I'm, I can't play, you know, when that's happening there? And again, this is assuming that your whole band is on the same page about these types of things. Right, right. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm get, I'm Which they might not be. I mean, it, you know, that that's a whole other thing is is that, you know, music sometimes brings people together that that aside from the music would never interact with one another. And I think exactly. that's a wonderful thing, to be perfectly honest. I Like, I have met people because of music that I would never meet in any other circles because they're not in those. We're not in the same circles together. And yet music brings us together and creates that, that foundation of trust and, and respect and all of that. And then, you know, you wind up having conversations, getting to know these people that again would never otherwise cross paths with. And I think it's That's great. great. Yeah. I, I love that part of it. Yeah. I get, I guess where I'm getting to is the skill to deal with those types of disruptions to your show, yeah, maybe maybe something your front man has to now start thinking about what what they're mm. going to do. You know, I've definitely seen people like, hey, we're just here to have fun for a couple hours. Let's let's keep it cool, you know, that type of thing. But you know, at what point in time do you stop playing? I mean, did, does it get that bad? Um, at what point in time? And you know, what is it? Do you see if you see some people intimidating or being? I know we've uh, we've played gigs where. We've seen a, a, a guy uh, being inappropriate to women. I will stop the show and yeah. tell him knock it off. Yeah, and ask for you know, and ask for a uh, ask for a bouncer to come over and, and take care of stuff. Right? I mean, it, it, but you say like, you're actually have people who are self identified Nazis, freaking Nazis. Yeah, I, I I don't even. I yep, yep, uh, yep. So what, 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 what would you have wanted to do? Oh, I was looking forward to playing the gig. I, I think it would have been great to do a show about it. Well, what would you have done if, if, no, no, no. What would you have done if Nazis at your show were creating a vibe? Get through it, try to fight through it, stop it, address it, you know. I mean, it, there's no binary answer to that. You know, if, if they were lining the streets outside the show, I'd go in and play the show. You know, which is what was happening, uh, at, yeah. you know, at the theater. Now, I mean, if they're, if they're coming in and, and interacting with the show that's different again the, the show may still be able to go on depending on how disruptive any pe person or group of people are trying to be but at some point you just say okay you know like i'm, I'm gonna leave now yeah. <laughs> you know you, you'd, they, you'd make a decision for you that your line has been crossed yeah you'd say that you'd say to the rest of the band you know, hey guys, sorry, this isn't for me. Yeah, this isn't for me. Yeah, exactly. But I, I don't know it. where that line is. I've I've never I've never been there. I'm trying to think of of times, and I'm I'm reminded of the story that I know I've told on this show before. When Go Figure, the band I had in in college, was playing a huge outdoor frat party, thousands of people there, and it, we were the headliner, and it was like spring weekend or something. People were freaking hammered when we got there. And, and that was the gig where, uh, you know, bottles were just flying. It was just mayhem. Mm -hmm. And the speakers fell on a, a, a speaker cabinet, uh, monitor cabinet started to fall on me while I was playing. And I, I, oh boy. yeah, 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 yeah. And I had said to our singer, like, dude, I don't know. Like at some point we got to pull the plug on this. He's like, no, 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 no. This is a good gig for us. Like, it's going to be fine. And then in the middle of the very next song was when I happened to look over and see this speaker coming at me. And so I, I, you know, put my hands on the speaker, which naturally resulted in me stopping playing the drums. And our singer turned around and looked at me like with fire in his eyes. And Jeff was like, he, you know, he was ready to, to, he thought I was just, I would, that, that I'd had it and I was, you know, pulling a power card or whatever. And then he saw th what, what actually happened and he came around and helped me and, you know, got the speaker set back up. We started, you know, we got things re resettled on the stage and, and we started playing and in the middle of the next song, 
the very next song, a bottle landed on the stage and Jeff turned to me with the, okay, yeah, you're right. We're done. <laughs> but, but it was actually his call. It, I had not, I had not pulled the plug. I probably would have, but yeah. uh, I didn't. So, you know, was, we were all close to it though. C- clearly much closer than I realized um, <laughs> at the time. Cause I thought Jeff would never have stopped playing at that gig. But you know, when a bottle lands next to you, it's time to go. And it wasn't that people were attacking us. They were just out of control. Is really yeah. is what it was. And it was like, yeah, okay. They, like this is, they're not really here watching us. We got to go, you know, it's fine. And the, and the fraternity was like, yeah, we're really sorry. And you know, they were, they were great to us. They got us safely off stage and you know, all that good stuff, so, which was great. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I don't think I've ever had to like, I don't think, I don't think so. That's the closest it's, it's come and it happened, but it was, it was definitely, he knew Jeff knew he had support when he pulled the plug on it. Cause he knew I was right there ready to go. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, I don't know. Have you ever had to do that? Like I said, the, the, the only thing was, was guys being yeah, yeah. awful, you know, grabbing at, at, at women and, mm-hmm. you know, we stopped a song. Nick was in the same headspace that I was and that, that I mean, we, there've been like, not that often. Some fights that we had to yes in the in the audience that type of thing. I think most most bands who've ever played a nightclub yep. have had that type. Of yeah, yeah, thing. yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. But that but I, you know, I've never had I've never had a thing, and I, and that's kind of why I bring this up is because in our world today, it is possible that you know people will people will come to public places to try and intim- intimidate the emotions of other people. Yeah, and I'm you know, and and so that type of thing. What do you do if you're the band and that happens? Play on. Stop, ask the promoter or, or owner to, you know, deal with it. And if he says, I will, or I, or if he says, I won't, you know, what do you do? It's a, a kind of an interesting thing that bands probably should talk about together. And again, it, there's, there's political lines, but then there's ethical lines, right? Yeah. Like, you know, we may have different, we may have different politics, but the people on your side of the politics line are causing a problem right here and right now. I'm not making a judgment about you, my fellow bandmate, but I am making a judgment about what this gig is going to turn into, you know, or what I, you know, feel I can do or what I can't support or that type of thing. So interesting thing that, you know, bands may want to, may want to talk about. What, what do you do if, if, uh, if, if uh, an unsavory element tries to yeah. influence the vibe of your gig? Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Intentionally or otherwise. And, and, and those things might be met with different uh, responses uh, for sure. But yeah. 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 Fights. I've, I've always found that the best thing to do when a bar fight breaks out is keep playing uh, yeah. uh, until someone gets control over the scenario because that fourth, that, that, you know, invisible fourth wall exists Far better if the band is playing music than if the band is just standing there watching the fight mm. happen. Uh, yeah. You know, but any time I've been on stage with a band, and thankfully it hasn't been too many times, but it's certainly been, you know, a handful of times you're on stage, a fight breaks out. And, you know, everybody on stage looks at each other like, okay, like keep playing. Like, right. Yeah. Yep. Another chorus, another verse, whatever it needs to be. You know, th- this version of Sweet Home Alabama just became 10 minutes long. Uh, <laughs> but that's, you know, it's like, let's get, let's let this not, especially if it's, if whatever is happening is happening right in front of the stage, you, you know, that's often the best thing you can do is just keep that moving. And, and it, it's worked out every time. So I'll but probably stick, stick with it. But yeah, I did. Um, You know, I'm really lucky. Paul I, and I, I, I can just stop there if I, if I wanted, right. Because I, I know I'm a, I'm a very fortunate person, but I was realizing yesterday that I have, it it's everywhere that I have lived has had a fantastic drum music store in, you know, within 20 minutes of wherever I've lived. When I was in Connecticut, it was a, this store called Norwalk music. It was run by two drummers father and son. Uh, when I was in Austin, it was Tommy's drum shop. And then here in New Hampshire, shortly after, when I moved here, this was not the case, but shortly after I moved here, Shane Kinney started up the drum center of Portsmouth, which now has moved to, I think, Northampton, but still called the drum center of Portsmouth. And these are the places that people in all the other areas of the country that don't have drum stores order from online now. And it, I am just, I'm, I've always been spoiled by this. 
And it really is spectacular to be able to go into a, a store and see, you know, dozens of drum sets or, or more set up and, you know, just have a, a what appears to be an endless inventory of symbols from which to choose. And for about the last year, I've been thinking I need to upgrade my or add to my crash symbol lineup. And uh, and there's one pasty symbol that I bought years and years ago in the dimensions line, which doesn't exist anymore, that I just love. And A, I wanted something that was similar to that. And then B, I wanted a few other crashes that would complement that, that I could use alongside of it. And so um, I actually started this process a year ago and uh, and didn't really deliver on it until yesterday and spent about an hour with with Shane in in the store auditioning all different kinds of cymbals and just hanging out and talking cymbals and drums and wound up buying five new cymbals yesterday which was spectacular. It was good bronze therapy for uh, for the the you know canceled COVID gigs that that I've had to deal with. But um, yeah, I was really stoked. It was fun, a fun little afternoon. You know, that's was, a lot of symbols. I mean, you, are you that's most of the symbols on your on your main kit, right? Yeah, I don't know that I would ever use all of these at the same time. I might. Uh, one of them is a a new ride symbol. It it's it, I I actually have a great Zildjian deep ride that that has been my workhorse for a long time, 15 years, maybe more and maybe uh, probably 20 years. And I, I like it, but it is, it can be a little bit too present. And so I wanted something a little lighter than that. And I found a, a pasty ride that, that, you know, we found, I should say, Shane was mm -hmm. really instrumental in, in doing this and basically, you know, pulling everything out of inventory and just testing and auditioning and back and forth and, it was a blast, uh, but uh, but I got a new ride symbol. I got three new crashes, and then uh, while I was there, I figured I'd pick up another China symbol because those things break um, pretty easily, and they're like sixty bucks. So I was like, well, while I'm at it, I'll just throw one of these in the pile. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really going to make a difference to the bill in the end. So sure, while I'm here, let's throw another one of those in. Uh, I've never heard that term bronze therapy before. I like it. <laughs> it might only be a drummer thing. So, and I, and I might have made it up. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> man, it might have been yesterday's uh, creativity moment. But, uh, but yeah, I'm stoked about uh, about these new symbols. I mean, it, you know, it'd be nice to have some gigs where I can play them. But, um, but it's fine. You know, it's, it, those will come. Those will come. So Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. But that's what I got, man. I don't, I don't, I don't know if we have anything else. Do you have anything else? No, time to close out this year. Onward to better things. I mean, here's one thing. All right, man. One, give me one good thought that you have about going into playing music, and it could be this new bass player and fling. You know, what what is the one thing that rises to the top about your hopes for for uh, looking forward to playing music in 22? I'm I'm really stoked for. Well, I, I mean, there's going to be a fling. That e the the songs we've been recording for Fling should come out this week if we can make that happen. But certainly within the next couple of weeks, those those five songs, which have all been out, but the collection of them is an EP we're going to push out. And I'm, I am excited about that. I'm really excited to finish the recordings of uh, – we've, we've got some overdubs to do uh, on the new Bitter Pill record. And hopefully that gets released – well, it will get released in you know the first quarter of the year, but hopefully sooner rather than later – there's just some fan. I mean, there's the songwriting on it is spectacular. The performances that we captured are also spectacular. Like I'm just really excited about this, this new bitter pill record. I mean, I'm excited about all this stuff that's coming out, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and then I'm, I'm excited to see where that record takes bitter pill because it, this year, you know, the, the desperate times record that we, finished just as COVID lockdown was beginning really fueled our summer uh, with the gigs that we had and all that stuff. And, and so, uh, you know, I'm, I, I have high hopes and high expectations for what we'll be able to do, you know, kind of touring throughout New Hampshire and, and maybe beyond with, um, with this new record. So that's great. Yeah. I'm, I'm stoked about it. Really, really stoked about it. I, I haven't Good. been, I haven't been this stoked about a record coming out in a long time. So it's exciting. And it, it, part of it is just the, you know, the energy that, that we came into recording this with, you know, we had a bunch of gigs this summer, each one sort of, you know, just built from the last and uh, it was, it was spectacular. And so to keep that momentum going with this, you know, recording this winter, uh, 
has been great. And I'm re- like I said, I'm really stoked. I got to go in on Thursday to record some harmonies. And then I think we might, we're close to done. Like the checklist is getting short, which is good. Mm. That means mixing can start and then mastering and then out it comes. So, yeah. All right, man. How about you? Yeah, same thing. You know, I'm, I'm going to keep telling you about my progress of trying to get some original thoughts created and, and down. And I keep, I'm noodling, I'm reading, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm you know, brain dumping stuff. And so I think I'm, I have probably 40 or 50 snips. Yeah. Right? And I don't know when when you go back and listen to the snips and see what you can do with them and, and you know, turn them into something. Versus when, you know, there, it's work and it's work I'm really looking forward to. So that's great. Uh, that, that's kind of where I'm going to be. So, yeah, like I said, I'm going to keep talking to you about this and and uh, we'll see how much progress we have. But definitely I'd like to have I'd like to have 15 to 20 songs in the first quarter of the year, you know, to try to do something with. And then, you know, maybe in the springtime go and record them and see what we can do. So that, Amazing. that's amazing. That's cool. Put a little put a little timeline on myself. Yeah, man. Well, if you need uh, if you need somebody to lay down drums for any of your tunes, you know, I got my set up right here. So you got any symbols? I, it turns out I have a few <laughs> a few symbols now, so it's not just going to be like toms and snare. I can I can hit some symbols for you too. So <laughs> I may I will almost definitely take you up on that. That'd be I I look forward to it, man. I love I one of the things I love the most is working with songwriters and and crafting you know uh, the drum part that fits the song the best and all of that stuff. It really like that's that's my wheelhouse, man. So I I'd, I'd love to do that together. So. All right. Well, we will talk. All right. Sounds good, folks. Right. Thanks for uh, thanks for everything this year. It's been a, a different year. I, I I hope I can say it's been a unique year, and that we don't repeat it. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, but um, but this show has been it's been fantastic being able to do this and uh, with all of you. And, and hearing from you and that interaction really does, I, I think I can speak for you, Paul, but it, certainly for me, it, you know, it's, it, it's wonderful to have this, especially when we're not performing uh, as much and, and just have it as a support group of, of, of sorts while we all just kind of figure out our path forward together. I, I think it's amazing. And I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful. So thanks for the idea for starting the show seven years ago, man. Oh yeah. yeah. It's been a pleasure. I love talking to my buddy and uh, it's fun when we hear from musicians from around the world. So check in with us people and let us know, you know, what you're doing with your musical lives, your weekend warrior life, your semi-professional life, or, you know, even if you're just getting started, we'd love to hear from you. So thanks everybody. Happy new year to all. Rock on. We'll see you in 2022. See ya. That's feedback at giggabpodcast.com. If you, uh, if you have something to say, we'd love to hear about it. Like Other- always be performing? Yeah, always. Always be performing. We have to. It's really the only thing we know how to do. Happy New Year, everybody!